my mother used crack cocaine. My mother was just stuck in a cycle that she was unable to break. I knew that my mother loved me, but she had an addiction. Every day I would rush home to see my mother and to just feel her warm embrace. Remember, as a seven-year-old boy, I rushed home, followed the same routine that I followed every single day. Opened up my mother's door. And when I was seven, I found my mother dead. I can remember in that moment feeling like I lost all hope. I can't remember in that moment feeling like everything that I wanted to do, everything that I wanted to become, it would never happen. I felt like my dreams were snatched away from me. About a week after my mother passed away, I went to class. Ms. Crowley, my first grade teacher, she said, hey, today we're doing the I Have a Dream assignment. Ms. Crowley pulled me to the side because the same teacher was at my mother's funeral a week prior. She said, today we're doing the I Have a Dream assignment, and John, I want you to write down your dream. I remember looking at Ms. Crowley and I said, Ms. Crowley, I don't really have a dream for myself. There's nothing I want to do. There's nothing I want to become. She said, I know there's something. I said, well, maybe one day I want to be a doctor like Dr. King, and I want to change and inspire the world. Because I knew that there were going to be kids that faced some of the challenges that I faced. And I wanted to just give them a little bit of inspiration to not give up on their dreams. And Ms. Crowley said something profound. She looked at me with tears in her eyes, and as tears began to roll down my face, she said, John, I believe in you. And I remember sitting in my dorm room as a sophomore in college, I was finally living one of my dreams of playing college football. But I still felt so empty on the inside because I knew there was someone that I needed to call, there was someone I needed to reach out to, my father. It was so easy for me to love other people but I still had this internal battle, struggling with learning how to love myself and loving the man who abandoned my sister and I after my mother passed away. So as I sat in my dorm room with tears in my eyes as this big, tough football player, I called my dad, who lived in Iowa at the time. I said, Dad, I want you to know that I love you and I forgive you. Some years had passed, but I wanted that forgiveness, that love to become action. So I called my father again and said, Dad, I just bought a duplex back home, I want you to move back home. So my father moved back to Washington. It was time for him to be reconnected with the family. We had so many great days together. I remember sitting in my father's living room. He looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, son, I'm so proud of you. It's one of the greatest moments in my life. Literally my best friend. Two and a half years ago, I got a call from my father's doctor. I raced to the hospital. I really didn't know what to think. As I got to my father's hospital door, his doctor, pulled me to the hallway and said, John, I don't know how to tell you this, but your father has stage four lung cancer. He has three to six months to live. And in that moment, I could remember feeling like I was that seven-year-old boy all over again. I felt like I lost all hope, but I made a decision in that moment. I truly wanted those great thoughts of love to become action, those great thoughts of forgiveness to truly become action. So I decided to serve my father. So for about a year, I took care of my father. My only dream was for my father to see me get married and to hold his baby girl. And I walked across the stage to receive my doctorate degree. I believe every young person, despite the obstacles, despite the adversity that they face, every young person is one I believe in you away from achieving their dream. I stand here as a man with so much joy. I stand here as a man filled with so much peace because I've literally decided to start every single day with a great thought. My daughter is so sweet. She has the best personality. Every day I rush home and to see my family. I walk in and see my wife. I say, hey, boo. My wife says, hey, babe. And my little daughter, her cute little personality, runs up to me, great bundle of joy with a big smile, reaches her hands out. She says, hey, babe. <laughs> it was once said that legacy is not what we leave for people, but legacy is what we leave in people. So my encouragement to each of you, you have an opportunity to either plant a seed or simply water a seed. I truly believe this about every young kid that you come in contact with. Just one I believe in you can literally change their life.